Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. To start this one off, I posted a little while back that I got interviewed for the podcast Animals at Home with Dylan, and I thought it came out really, really well. He has the video of the podcast. Granted, it's just going to be Dylan talking, and you're going to see Dylan and not me because my dog Worm might have eaten my camera right before we went on. I was planning on recording the whole thing for my end as well. But Worm found my camera, brand new webcam in a box, chewed it up, so that didn't happen. So you'll just see my big moon face right in the the picture when I'm talking. But I think the actual interview came out really, really well. And I was really excited that he had me come on and talk to him because it was a different thing for me. Usually when I'm talking to people about tarantulas, it's people that are already interested and have some knowledge of the hobby. In this case, it was somebody that didn't have a lot of knowledge of the hobby that was asking some questions that really made me think about things in ways I hadn't in a in a long time. So hopefully some of you guys at the end of this video, I'll put a one of those when I put my videos in there, I'll put the video there. So you can just click on that, go right over to it and listen to the podcast or I'll put links to the actual podcast in my description so people can check it out. Again, the only reason I'm bringing this up again is some people did not catch the original thing. I posted it on my little forum that's on the YouTube page, my community page, and some people missed it. So just to give people a heads up for this video, we'll be back to doing a rehousing video. I haven't done one of these in a while. And again, for those of you that are worried that I'm getting away from the rehousing videos, I'm always going to be doing those kind of, you know, gritty rehousing ones where it's just Billy and the camera and we're kind of moving the spiders. I love doing those. People like seeing them. In this instance, we're going to look at some Afana Pelma species. Now, heads up, they're not going to be big, beautiful Afana Pelmas. They're all little like two-year-old spiderlings. So just want to give people a warning so when they start look, looking at the video, they realize there's going to be a lot of little tan slings getting moved. But again, I thought it'd be cool to show off my Afana Pelma collection as small as it may be or as little as they may be. And I've had a lot of people ask me to talk about a fauna pelma and so well here we go so anyway enough of me talking let's get into the actual video okay we're about to rehouse a bunch of a fauna pelma slings i actually wasn't going to record this at first because honestly the rehousing of slings isn't particularly thrilling however i've had a lot of people asking me for husbandry video on the various afana pelma species and unfortunately the only one i feel comfortable doing a full husbandry video on right now is a fauna pelma calcotis because i've had larger specimens, raised up a smaller specimen. Unfortunately, these guys I've had, I believe, about a year and a half, two years. I got the majority from Tanya at Fear Not Tarantulas, and they are absolutely tiny still. These guys take forever to grow. So, well, here's a Calcodas that I picked up from Dinky's, tarantula, uh, Dinky's Reptiles a little ways back, and that one is molted, I think, twice since I've gotten it about a year ago. And then... I don't know if you can see in there, but there is a, a Fauna Pelma hensi. That one, when I got it, was absolutely microscopic. It's molted about three times, so finally putting on a little bit of size, but still very, very small. So again, know for folks who are picking these guys up, you have a long ways to go before you actually have a spider that's showing its adult colorations. One that's coming out now that people are picking up is the moray, the Fauna Pelma moray, and I have one right in here, which unfortunately just went behind the cork bark. I don't know if you can see it's a little button there. It's just barely showing up, but unfortunately it's incredibly tiny. So it's going to be a while before it's sporting those beautiful colors. So what we're going to do here is I have these new enclosures that I also got from Fear Not Tarantulas. I've had them for a while and I've been waiting to break them out. And these right now are in the dram vials, which I like, but what I usually do is when I see the spiders starting to abandon their burrows and hang up on the surface, I put them in something a little bit bigger. So we're going to get these guys out into something that will accommodate them as they put on some more size. So what we have here, I got to make sure these line up, but this could be catastrophic. Calcotis, Calcotis. Now this is in here, the BioDude substrate. I've been using it for just about everything lately, and I love this stuff. So we'll see how that goes. We have a piece of cork bark. We have some sphagnum moss. The substrate is damp over here. And one of the reasons I want to do this too is winter's coming. It's a lot easier to keep a larger container damp. These guys, once they start putting on some size, what I'll do is use a pipette. I'll take some water. Stick the pipette down the side, squirt some water in carefully, make sure I don't get it in the burrow, and that's how I keep the lower levels moist. But with winter coming, I want to give them something a little bigger that's a little easier to keep hydrated. So with that, I'm going to sit down because it's going to be little teeny slings, and this should hopefully go quickly. Man, these containers look huge now that I look at them. There you go, buddy. There you go, buddy. This is the one that was out of my hand yesterday. Now it's not coming out. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
literally it was out this is what gave me the idea to do this is this one's been out of my hand twice now no 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 there we go so we want to get a close up of that And that patch on the back would be the urticating hairs. A lot of people see that and think their tarantula is in pre-molt. They'll say there's a big dark spot. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking at an overall dark coloration. And with slings, it's usually just fleshy because they don't have those dark hairs on their abdomen yet that will show through. All right, one down. And what I'm going to do is as I do these, I'm going to move them out of the way and put them around here so I don't accidentally put two spiders in the wrong in the same thing, which would be tragic. This one I might just pull the whole thing out. Yeah, buddy. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. And what we're going to do here, we have Hensi. Hensi, this one's going to try to flee. No, 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 no. The old spoon trick. I use these for scorpions a lot. There we go. If you want to get in on that one. So, as you'll see, look exactly the same. As the Calcotas, little teeny guys. Now what I'm hoping they will do is do some burrowing under here and I'll be able to monitor. I know the uh, Fonapelma more has done quite a bit of burrowing around her enclosure. I say her, hopefully her enclosure. All right, two down. All right, a hensi. It's going to be really tough to do and not do now. Little inside joke there. All right, there we go. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. That's the only problem with these bottles. I feel like you have to go up. You usually want to go up. Easy. No, no, no. Oh, there we go. go. There's a Hensi, another one. With the dogs clicking in the background. All right. No, it's Next up, a moderatum. This one will show. A little bit. All right, these guys are really teeny tiny, so you're getting the teeny tinier closures. Perfect. Oh, please go out, please go out. There we go. Little teeny dude. This one and the other can up. Right, she ran away. Moderate them, moderate them. Make sure I don't screw these up. Now, I have found that with the Afana Pelma slings, they like to burrow when they're very small, which is why these are nice because they'll burrow down and do a nice little. Then in the bottom, the issue I've had with them, sometimes I have had, if you give them too much substrate, they will molt and they don't seem to come back up. So that's something to monitor. I've only had it happen twice, but one of them sealed up the top of its, well, basically you can see like it's done there, sealed it up, but you could tell by the bottom, when you look at the bottom, it was not 
in pre-molt. It had just molted, oh, actually a, a couple weeks before, and hadn't been eating. So I opened it up, dropped a dead baby roach at the top, and it came up and ate immediately. So just something to monitor if the, if the substrate's deep. And that's the only problem with these dram bottles is they can be a little bit deep for the size of the sling. Oh boy, this is tedious. Another dog drinking in the background. Yeah, they're tiny. This one's ready to pop. All right. Really, go now, sweetie. Dog's clicking in the background. This is a new video for you. This is kind of what we do. It doesn't look great. And there she is. I'm going to try to get her on this one as well. All right, two to go. And and this rehab there. <laughs> just tedious with the little teeny ones. That's why I don't usually record these, only because, like, this one's right on top. So which one we got here? Moderatum, moderatum. Did we do bicoloratum? That was the last one we did, right? I guess it's moderatum. Bicoloratum. Whoops. <clears throat> Bicoloratum. I didn't read the label. Good thing I got in the right one, or those would have been forever screwed up. There we go. Oops. There we go. These guys are probably just over a, well, just a half an inch, maybe a little more. Mm. The problem is I think people, when they, when they hear half an inch, they picture something much bigger. These might even be three quarters of an inch now. Good shot of that one, and I'll try to get on the other camera as well. There it is. Not much to see here. They all look like little brown slings. You get a lot of people that will email me, ask me what sling they think something is, and it's like, well, it's a new world. <clears throat> All right, last one. A Hensi. Of course, this one's going to make it difficult. That's the last one. Yeah. Dog snorting in the background. Get it to drop right in. Yep. Oh, 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 you. There you go. Kind of. Oh. There it is. And that's a Fondapelma Hensi. So, three Hensi, one by Coloratum, two Moderatum, I believe is what we just rehoused, and then a Calcotus. There we go. I'll hold up the other camera, see if we can't get some shots. I can never tell which one's going to be better. And there we go. That one I don't think it's very good. So, there we go. All of the Fauna Pelma, well, the majority. I have uh, one other Fauna Pelma, I think. Two other Fauna Pelma? These little boxes are really nice because they're stackable and they're square. That's the only problem with the dram bottles is they're not stackable. And here are the other ones. So we got all of these done. And let me see if I can just... I have people ask me, can you do an update on the more? And like, no, because you never see it. Here it is. All right, you ready? No, no, there it is, right there. That's the Moray, folks, the one everybody's excited about because it does have beautiful dull colors, but I got a funny feeling I'm going to be probably balder than I am now and gray-haired by the time this one's shown its colors. Gorgeous when they grow up, though. So there we go. A lot of Afana Pelmas rehoused. Again, as the slings, the vials, I think, are the way for the tiny slings, because these guys started off, they were probably, I don't know, a third of an inch. They were really, really small. 
So I like these because you can keep track of the sling much better. It's a lot easier. I would not start them off in these, but now they got some size. They're about anywhere from a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Something like that makes more sense. It'll also retain moisture better for the winter time because these evaporate very quickly, even though I do keep them in a container with an open jar of water in it so that it basically keeps them from drying out super fast. There's just not a lot of substrate in there to hold water. So I moisten it down usually within a couple of days. It's dried out again. These will allow me to keep it a little more moist for longer for those long winter months. So there you go, a Fauna Pelma species rehouse, a bunch of little brown slings, but hopefully the folks have been asking for a Fauna Pelma updates. Uh, this is the best I can do. All right, so here we go. It's a couple weeks later, and I just wanted to give a couple updates because as you can see here, there's already been some burrowing. Let me just zoom in. There's a little burrow there. Hensi, you can see her right there. And again, I don't want to put the light on because I'm getting a bad glare. So sorry for the bad images, but I just want to kind of give everybody an update that they have started digging. That's an Ecampistratus. I'm not sure why I just zoomed over that much. Whoops. There we go. There's one in there. You can see the burrow right about in there. Burrow right in there. So they've actually started. A couple of them haven't. They've just adopted to the hides that I've given them and they haven't completely burrowed yet but they did eat which is good so they're all settling in doing really well and I will look forward to hopefully growing these guys up and having some adult colors before I turn 60. All right, so that actually went really well, as I kind of expected it would. They're just a little Fauna Pelma species on a rehousing difficulty scale from 1 to 10. That's probably about a 0.25. But anyway, they got into their new enclosures. They're obviously doing well, settling in, doing some burrowing. A couple of them have eaten already. So I will look forward to growing those guys up. Again, it's one of the things with the Fauna Pelma species. If you buy the slings, be prepared. It's going to be a long time before you have one of those big, beautiful adults. Okay, so again... I'm going to ask folks to go over and check out the video of the podcast that I did with Animals at Home. It was I thought it came out great. I'm going to put that in here. I'll put one of my videos in here. For those of you that would like to subscribe, very much appreciate. You can click that circle right up there. As always, I answer all comments. Try to. It takes me a little while now because I'm getting a lot of comments, but I will always answer them. So please feel free to comment. Hope to see some of you guys in the comment section and hope to see some of you guys next time.